<laughs> um, I'm just so excited and, and humbled and just honored to be here today. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank Mr. Stone Cipher um, for his vision of equal justice under law and allowing all of us uh, to participate. It's just incredible. I know none of us would be here without his vision, um, but my family personally, uh, we've been debt free because of this opportunity. Uh, we're now closing on our first home. I think maybe in the next day or two it'll happen here. Uh, and we've been able to earn a six figure income um, from home, so it's just incredible. I want to thank an awesome team for everything and incredible executive directors. We love you. You're amazing. We do anything for you. Um, but folks, actually, I want to tell you how I got started. A friend's roommate um, was literally sicked on me with prepaid legal services and was unrelenting. She called me all the time. So I finally said, if I register, will you just stop calling me? Um, she agreed, <laughs> and I, I got started. And I think she was really excited because I had had some success in corporate America and other ventures. Um, but the challenge was I ended up kind of being a nightmare. You see, I had no network marketing experience. So I took all of those things that were supposedly supposed to work in corporate America and tried to put them in this business here, and it didn't work at all. i got to tell you some funny things that we did. Um, we did flyers, and those didn't work. The only person that called us um, was somebody who told us to get our flyers off of their building. <laughs> we uh, actually rented an office space and took out ads and was so excited because I was sure there was going to be a flood of folks uh, coming in to interview for this prepaid legal opportunity. And that nobody showed up, and the gentleman felt so bad for me, he gave me the room for free. Um, we did long distance packages and I think we shoved every single thing in there that we could get. They were like this big and we mailed them to everybody. Um, but I think one of my favorite failures was um, we had themed private business reception. Those were great. One was champagne and white elephant gift exchange. Another one was for Cinco de Mayo. And that didn't work either. Um, so I'm kind of the poster child for what not to do. And um, the unfortunate thing was that's really what I trained the first generation of the team that we recruited. So we put about 100 people in the first year in the business, and not one of them are still left today. So I say that to say they didn't quit their memberships because they're not stupid, right? But uh, they, at least the challenge was you can never go back to make a second impression. Would you agree? So that because of my ego, because of I did things that didn't duplicate and didn't work, um, I robbed them of that opportunity to be able to you know, be involved with this incredible company. Um, so everyone that you're going to hear today is going to overcome some incredible adversities. Uh, my biggest adversity was I had to overcome myself. Um, <laughs> And so the only thing I couldn't mess up, seriously, was showing up to big events like this. And I knew if I just kept showing up and showing up because of the associations, um, would eventually figure it out. And so I'm proud to tell you that because of this African proverb that it takes a village uh, to raise a child, this prepaid legal village actually raised this ring earner. So that was kind of exciting. And they... Um, so literally all the people here on the front rows um, poured into me from the stage, whether they knew it or not, at the after events and often at the lounge, right, <laughs> over there. So I'm truly a testament to just stick and stay, um, and it'll eventually work for you, I promise. Fast forward, um, I had my 40th birthday, August 20th. We had a huge party uh, Friday. All my friends and family were here, and I was glad twice. Glad to see him come and glad to see him go, and here's why. I had made some lofty promises, and when you proclaim things, sometimes you've got to, you know, put your mouth where your where, where the mouth is. And I had told John Long that I would definitely, at Dominican Republic, bang this ring out by Vegas. I had also written a thank you note to Mr. Stonecipher for the Dominican Republic and promised him that I would be the next six-figure ring earner uh, in the company. And so, again, my family was there. I was ready for them to leave. Um, and so I was excited to run for this next couple weeks. Everybody knows we haven't slept in like a week. But that very next day, um, I got a call from Candace, and she asked me what size was my ring. And <laughs> I had no idea. No idea. I guess I can't count either, so that's okay. Um, but I can tell you um, that I told my mom, my husband was out of the country, and I told um, my mentor, Mr. Craig Hefner, about it. I ran to an appointment, came out about an hour and a half later, and it was telephone, teleoperator, teleprepaid legal associate. It was everywhere. Um, but I love this company because in corporate America, they spread negative, bad rumors. But in this company, they only spread good rumors, and they're true, so it's exciting. So just, <laughs> just in closing, folks, um, I hovered under this ring for two and a half years and was frustrated and angry and uh, just really wanted to bang it out. And what I understand now is that everything in life is timing and it just wasn't my time. And so I'll tell you right now, um, you can be as bad as I was and still make it to the ring. Thank you very much. Have a great night.